if your photography work or your videography work is primarily studio based, then you probably have experienced the same pains that I have. Tripods are literally a, a bane on my life. Trying to set them up to get them to the correct height, the correct angle, trying to fine tune my imagery has been uh, an absolute nightmare from the start. And I've been doing this for close to two decades now. It's, wow, it's a long time. And all that time I've been using tripods because that's what we, we think of. That's what we, we see, that's what we envision. That's the end goal for um, camera stabilization and stability for a stand to put your, your camera on. Can I tell you, there is a better way. There is a much more functional way to do this. And we've all lost sight of it. We've forgotten it. It used to be quite a standard. In fact, it still is in high-end production in commercial photography. They don't use tripods. That's not the way to do things. As I started looking into this and trying to find a solution to my problems, I stumbled across what's called a column stand, a studio stand, a salon stand. They're all the same thing. They come from a, a range of high-end manufacturers and they are fantastic they are basically a single upright column on wheels on a three-legged base so it's low it is sturdy and it is stable and it's quite a heavy-duty column on those big ones and you can attach a secondary arm a vertical arm that can be raised or lowered extended or pulled back as needed and on the end of that of course you attach the tripod head and your camera of choice and then you can get much more precise motion much more precise uh, positioning faster more fluid much much easier than you can with a tripod without all the stress and, and, and aches on your back trying to get legs into exactly the right position in my quest for this, I of course decided immediately that that's what I wanted in my studio. However, they are expensive. They are like three grand minimum and going up. And the three grand ones aren't the best. The, you're looking at about seven to 1500 uh, grand, at least 1500 grand, seven to 15 grand. That's what I meant to say, at least to get into the ballpark of them. And they're huge and they weigh a ton, but they are still much more functional than tripods. So I cobbled together my own system that pretty much replicates 98% of what one of those does and gives me what I, I think about 90% 90, 90 of the stability that one of those stand does. And I've been using it for the past year and a half. It has completely replaced tripod usage in almost all my work. Not saying that tripods don't have their place but it's not in the studio. Tripods are great for landscapes. They're great for out in your backyard. They're out going places. But when you're in a controlled environment, you want precision and you want ease of use. And that's where this sort of falls in. Just a quick side note, as I was researching the concept way before I started, I did run into a number of videos of people who've built their own similar setups. Uh, most of those required drilling and welding and cobbling together of pieces with with uh, heavy duty glue and all sorts of work. What I've put together is much, much simpler. It's literally off the shelf components that you can put together yourself. It is a Godox light stand. It is a newer um, crossbar, a tripod crossbar. And then of course I had a grip head handy that I just used on it, but you could use whichever one you want. So enough talking, let's actually show you it in use. So here we are with the uh, actual device in use. And I apologize for not being able to show the entire thing in the frame. It is actually 2.4 meters tall. So it is very, very tall. But the good thing about it is that there is a break right in the middle column here. It comes in two parts. So you can take this top section off. If you don't need above that height for most of your work, it's gonna be just fine, easier to move around, easier to get through doors and that sort of thing. But if you do need a little extra height, you do have it there. And I find it handy just to leave it on, but you, you can make up your own mind about that sort of thing. On the base, we do have that three angled wheel section. The casters are incredibly well built. It's very, very smooth and easy to move around. A little awkward here because I got lots of stuff in the way, but yeah, very, very easy to move around and also very, very easy to lock into position once you found where you want to be. The main feature of the column section, forget about this, this is an add-on, but the main feature here is this section here. It's a pistol grip. You can use this with one hand. I'm right-handed, even with my left hand, I can move this up. I can move it down. I can spin it around and get it into position exactly where I want to grab my other hand. Sometimes when I'm working with two hands, very, very easy to 
angle just like that one on here and one on there so it works very very well in that setup and it's going to lock into position very very strongly it's not going anywhere once you release that little lever right down here so that and the stand is the main core of the setup now there is a mount right here and you could add a tripod head right to there and do whatever you want but i wanted a little bit more flexibility i wanted to be able to do top down stuff and really get into uh, angles and positions that I wouldn't normally be able to do. So I added this bar, which is originally designed for tripods to overcome some of the failings of tripods, but here it works perfectly. There are two features of this that I don't use. If I undo this one, you can angle this up or down. I don't really need that because I have a, a ball head on the end here, so I don't ever use that. And if I undo this one, I could swivel it back and forward. But again, just because I can do it with this, with one hand, don't really need to use that. What I do use is this top knot here. If I undo that, I can pull this back. Now, most of the time, if I'm taking pictures or filming straight on, I like to keep this as close to the center of gravity as possible, just to increase the stability. Uh, that works quite well for most scenarios. I can bring it down, I can put it wherever I want. But sometimes if I want to, as in what we've got here, if I want to do a top down shot, I'm going to push that out, lock it down, nice and firm get my camera roughly where I want it to be and then just bring this up into position and then just fine tune exactly where I want. The other nice thing is that oftentimes when you're doing a top down uh, image, you can't really see your settings. The camera's all the way up there and you can't really get to it. With this, it's kind of very handy because if I couldn't see what I was doing on my screen, I could just bring this down, adjust what I need to here, adjust it back into position. But truth be told, sometimes that's not really functional. Let's bring this down a little bit closer. Sometimes that's not very functional. Sometimes you need to be able to see what you're doing properly and keep the camera in position, which is where this little part comes in. There's two of these that come with it. They are uh, mounts for uh, tripod heads. Let's just pull that off, just like so. Fairly easy to use. Uh, they're very, very much the same as the one that's on here. And what you can do with these is you could actually mount a little uh, tray on there if you wanted to. So you could have a laptop or a uh, tablet or something on one end. So you could have remote control if you're doing macro shots or stacking or anything like that. Or if you're filming and you like to use a field monitor, you can pop one of those on this end so you can get the camera into position, but still have a, a field monitor in the back. Like I said, those come in handy quite a bit. My plan in the future is to add a three-way geared head to this because this is very, very handy, especially for filming. And I can quickly get into position but sometimes I need to nudge things just uh, a few millimeters one way, a few millimeters up, that sort of thing. So I'm planning on actually putting a three-way three -way geared head on this end so that I have the option of one or the other. And specifically when it comes to filming, that's really gonna come in handy when I'm doing videos for YouTube and stuff because I'll be able to do things like have this camera in position. Let's pull that back a little bit. Say I've got it in position there. And with another head, I'll be able to put a secondary camera sitting right here, which will take in this entire scene, including the back camera, including the settings and whatever I'm doing. So that will be very, very handy for me. Probably a, an obscure and niche use case, not really for everyone. But overall, this has been a godsend in my studio. One of the really nice things about it is that unlike a regular tripod, which has a very, very wide base, a very, very wide footprint and a conical shape of space as it gets taller. So it's very, very difficult to bring a tripod and butt it right up against your shooting surface to get into position a lot of times. More often than not, I've had issues. In fact, this is why this section was invented because you just can't do that sort of thing. But with a center column like this, it's really, really easy. Say I was to bring this back and tilt it that way. I can bring this in right, right here. And I've actually got my camera over the table and I'm right up against the table down there. If I wanted to do a top down shot, as I showed you before, very, very simple. Slide that out, bring it into position, bring it right up to the table if I need to. Let's actually bring that back a little bit. It's too far forward. There we go. just like so. Very, very, very simple and very, very easy to adjust things to get into your position that you need to. And there's a lot of um, 
a lot of benefits to being able to quickly work and adjust yourself. You can, if you're filming, you can do a few shots like this and then come around and just very, very quickly get the same, the same setup, the same scene from a slightly different angle. I will, uh, however, say with the length of this, when you're moving around, when you've got this close on this side, be cautious about this end. It's, it's a big bar that's sticking out in uh, uh, quite a long way. So you wanna make sure you're not smashing things and bumping things. The only final thing to say about this is that after years and years of fighting with tripods, trying to get my legs exactly where I want to be, trying to get my head exactly where I want to be, lifting up and adjusting things, my back was definitely paying for that. There was a lot of ache and pain uh, that was a result of, of that kind of work. This has really, really streamlined the process and it is so much easier. There's no lifting. There's no fighting with tripod legs. You literally just position this exactly where you want. It's that fast, that simple, that easy. And because it's on wheels, it, it's wherever I want to shoot at any point in time, it's so, so easy. Anyway, let's go back to the FaceTime. And so that was the whole setup as it works in my studio at least. Uh, as I said there, it has really eased my back a lot of stress and pain. I'm getting older. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this for about two decades and I was old when I started. So um, yeah, anything that I can do to make things easier, to, to take the strain off my body is always a good thing. But more than that, it has been very, very functional. I'm, I'm getting shots now that perhaps in the past I would have I would have settled for close enough. I would have settled for almost the right position because the tripod doesn't go quite as high as I want or when I get it to the right height, it becomes unstable, a little bit wobbly uh, because I couldn't get the head in exactly the right position or the right angle. I would settle for, for substandard basically. Now I am able to get a much more precise angling, a much more precise control of what I want to portray, which is a huge step up. Uh, on top of that, as I said in the uh, demo section, I do plan on adding another tripod head that will just increase that precision even more. So when I'm doing fine close-up work, um, watches, pens, small things like that, I can precisely position my camera exactly where I want it to be and lock it off. This is being a game changer in my work. I wish I had discovered it uh, at least a decade ago. I'm glad I've discovered it now and I'm happy to share it with you. Uh, please, if, if, if this is something that you've been looking at and you're not sure how to do it and this has helped you, please leave a comment below. If you have another solution, or if you find better options for these components that I've used, again, leave a comment below. Let people know because we're all very, very interested in making our work easier and better. And somehow in between those, yeah, any little bit helps. So yeah, thank you for your time and uh, yeah, take care.